You're watching Fox 55 Fort Wayne. Straight ahead on Fox 55 News, riding the bus could get more expensive after CityLink's meeting tonight. I'm Trace Grant. I'll have a preview of what their plans are when it comes to increasing the bus fare. Plus, the murder trial for Richard Allen will soon begin. Jurors are on their way to Carroll County tonight. He is on trial for killing two girls. We'll look ahead at what to expect once the jury is sworn in. And the Million Meal Movement working to keep the community from going hungry. We'll let you know about its mission and how it's bringing local businesses together to make a difference. It certainly was a sunny and beautiful day today. How about some more warmth? That's heading our way. Have the details in your hometown forecast. Bringing you the latest news and weather from your hometown. This is Fox 55 News at 5. In less than 24 hours, a jury made up of Allen County residents will begin weighing some evidence in that high-profile double murder trial of Richard Allen in Carroll County. Thanks so much for making Fox 55 your choice for local news tonight. I'm Brian Miller. And I'm Tara Brantley. Allen is on trial for the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. Fox 55 Laquan Richardson joins us tonight to report on jurors and the case that lies before them. Laquan. Brian and Tara, I have the latest on the case, but first, some background. On February 13th, 2017, the city of Delphi, Indiana, was on edge after two local teenage girls, Abby Williams and Libby German, disappeared. Their bodies were discovered the very next day. This made national headlines as authorities searched for their killer, but it wasn't until three years later when the police arrested Richard Allen in October of 2022. Today was the final day of pretrial motions before the trial begins in Carroll County tomorrow. Judge Fran Gull reviewed several motions, one of which was whether Allen's medical records should be admissible in court. The records are a part of a settlement that references Allen's mental health and the treatment he received. That case was settled back in 2020 before Allen's arrest in 2022. Therefore, Judge Gull ruled, ruled it inadmissible in his trial. Coming up at 6, I'll tell you about a challenge of a witness in the case. Reporting live in studio, I'm Laquan Richardson, Fox 55 News. All right, thanks for that, Laquan. So, yes, it's a wrap for the Allen County portion of the Delphi murder trial. The suspect, Richard Allen, along with those 12 jurors, the four alternates, they'll all be headed, including everyone else who's got a vested interest in this case, headed to Carroll County. That includes several podcasters and YouTube content creators who are documenting this fascinating case through its entirety. Now, I was in the courtroom earlier this week among about the 20 or so media members who were allowed to view the proceedings in Judge Frankel's courtroom. Among them, former defense attorney Bob Mata. He hosts the podcast Defense Diaries, and Mata tells me he's spent the last 23 years as a defense trial attorney before giving that up and then moving on to the reporting side of things. He says... This is a very interesting case, a classic whodunit, if you will, with both sides relying heavily on witness and expert testimony. The state listed about 60 people who might testify, while the defense listed more than double that. Uh, we had a bunch of witnesses, I think, for the defense that ultimately probably won't be called. You have no obligation to call witnesses that you list, but you have an obligation to list them if you might call them. So I, I don't anticipate that we'll get 150 people paraded up there by the defense, but if there's anybody that, you know, they have an inkling might help them, they'll call them, you know, and if not, they won't. Meanwhile, Mata, several other people, they'll be at the trial and podcasting about the latest developments through the extent of this trial, which is expected to wrap up by November 15th. And we have more news out of the courthouse today. Two people learn how much time they'll spend behind bars. First off, a 12-year sentence for this woman, Erin Carr, after she signed a plea deal last month. She'll serve six years behind bars with the rest suspended. Charges were filed against Carr after she killed a man while driving high in July 2022. Police say she was high on cocaine and meth and had both marijuana and alcohol in her car when she was arrested. Sentencing also today for this person, Jermaine Harrison, who signed a plea deal of his own at the end of last month. Court documents indicate Harrison sent nude photos of himself to a nine-year-old girl and tried to video call her. He pleaded guilty to child solicitation in exchange for another felony charge being dropped. Harrison will now spend two years in prison. And the judge agreed to a plea deal for a man who was charged in a shooting back in 2023. That shooting ended the death of 18-year-old Jocelyn Bolf. 
Out of the deal, Swanee Taylor expected to serve 12 years was in prison, three more for probation and drug dealing. Court documents say Taylor helped kill both in January last year if they had a falling out. He's also facing a murder charge, which he's set to go to trial for in February. And over in DeKalb County, a teen is recovering after a crash that happened last night. Police say they were drunk behind the wheel. Deputies saw this. Wow, look at that mangled mess there. This is just off State Road 327. Right around 6 in the evening, I see the driver left the road, causing the truck to roll over into that field. 17-year-old driver, we're told, taken to a hospital is expected to survive. We have more details on these stories, the Richard Allen trial, and much more. You can download the free Fox 55 News app to get all those set to your phone, including news alerts and push notifications. You can also get all of that over on our website, WFFT.com. Regarding our weather, once we got past this morning's early freeze, it turned out to be a beautiful day full of sunshine. Yes, uh, the early freeze, though, Nicholas walked outside. He said uh -huh. it looks like there's diamonds on the grass. I like that, because, diamonds. Because, yeah, it didn't, something that we hadn't really experienced yep. yet, mm -hmm. at least this year. Temperatures warming up quite a bit, and I guess it was the diamonds in the sky after that. <laughs> Gee, I'll just barely parry. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. It's beautiful out there. It did shimmer quite a bit early this morning. Downright cold. A lot of us bottomed out in the lower 30s. Right now, we're in the 60s. That sunshine really helped us out. 63, that's what we have in Fort Wayne right now. About 62 in Columbia City, matching that in Hartford City. And we're at about 61 in Wabash. A beautiful evening to get a nice little stroll in. Lower 60s through about 6 o'clock. Lots of sunshine. And then once the sun goes down, our temperatures drop pretty quickly. We're talking middle 50s by 7, upper 40s by about 8 o'clock. So it is shaping up to be yet another cold night. But we have a whole lot of warmth coming our way. I'll break it all down for you in your hometown forecast. Beverly thinks I like the diamond for you. I like that. In less than 30 minutes, CityLink will hold its final board meeting to discuss the future of its fares. And the big question everyone wants to know is will they go up? Yes, of course, we've been following this story as it develops here over the last several weeks. They're talking about integrating more technology into the payment system. Fox 35 Choice Grant live for us tonight. Choice has been following this several meetings before getting to this point where they're expected to make a final decision, right, Choice? Yes, Brian and Tara. So I'm here at the Allen County Public Library where, and like you guys said, in less than half an hour, the City City Links Board will meet to discuss a potential price increase. Now, this price range could go from 17 all the way up to 80%. So to give you guys a baseline of what that pricing will look like, regular fare right now is $1.25. If they do vote to increase fare, it'll go up to $150 for, again, regular bus fare. Now, CityLink hasn't increased their prices since 2008. Their CEO told us earlier that they're, with inflation, they're simply trying to keep up. And actually, Fort Wayne has the second largest bus fare in the state right behind Indianapolis. Now, CityLink is also implementing a new way for riders to pay. They're trying to do it more electronic payments. Their plan is to use an app called Token Transit, available for both iPhones and Androids. Now, the app is called Token Transit, where you can store and pay for all your passes right on your phone. This is no different than if you basically buy your tickets online as it is already. Now, the meeting will start in just under half an hour. And again, if you if they do decide to increase the fare, that won't start until for, um, excuse me, for access routes, that won't start until July 1st. And then for regular bus fare, that will start April 1st. Both of this will be in 2025. And we will bring you guys a live look from that meeting in the next half an hour as well. And then at first at 10, I'll get, update you guys with that final decision. Reporting live in downtown Fort Wayne, Troy Grant, Fox 55 News.